the book of Psalms, Psalms 119. Psalms 119. We're going to look at verses 1 through 3. Psalms 119, verses 1 through 3. The title message is Real Bible Believers' Blessings. Real Bible Believers' Blessings. Real Bible Believers' Blessings. Psalms 119, 1 through 3. The Bible says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Brother Matthew, can you pray for the message? Today's teaching, and I pray that you bless today's teaching, and I pray that you fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord God, and that you bless the service, that you bless the Bible study, and that you bless the fellowship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So with real Bible believers' blessings, and you are here because you are a Bible believer, and there's a lot of terms out there for, for Bible believers. There are terms such as you know, fundamentalist. There's terms such as you know, Bible dumpers. There are different types of terms for being a Bible believer. But there are very few real Bible believers out there. Right. One of the reasons is because people don't believe in dispensationalism. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And dispensationalism is a system of dividing the word. So you have to divide the word of God in order to get the right doctrine. You can't say tribulation, salvation is same as salvation of grace period right now. You can't say things are same when it comes to doctrine in the, in the parts of Old Testament, in the parts of you know, Gospels, and in the parts of Book of Acts and Hebrew James. Fundamentalists are those who believe in fundamentals of faith. So fundamentals, you know, everybody could call themselves fundamentals. You know, each denomination, each religion could say, you know, we have fundamentals of faith. News media labels fundamentalists as those who believe the Bible literally, which is actually you and I. If you believe the Bible literally, you're really a fundamentalist. However, many of those so-called fundamentalists do not believe in the literal Bible. They believe different things in the Word of God, as in they don't believe in the perfect Word of God. They only believe in the originals. Also, they don't understand or they're they not to go into deep doctrines in the Word of God. That's why many of you including myself, have gone to and attended many of churches out there. And our knowledge never grew. Right. You are stuck at this well. You know, you only know about salvation. But you don't get to know anything else. We're supposed to learn Bible from Genesis to Revelation, right. the whole Bible. A lot of times you're stuck, you know, Romans, right? And sometimes people will bring out those verses that does not even apply to you, like Book of Acts, verses in Revelation, Genesis, verses from prophets. It is a real Bible's blessing that we have the truth. Yes. The reason you came to this church the reason you're listening online is because you found the truth. Amen. You know, the Bible says, truth shall set you free. So that faith comes up by hearing and hearing the word of God. And the word of God will give you that truth. Yes. It's just that there are too many, too many so-called 
Bible believers out there who does not stand for right doctrine. If you were taught something from the Word of God, and it is the truth, and it is given by verse by verse, you're supposed to believe it. Yes. You have to have that heart's attitude where you're going to believe what the Bible says. Amen. But so many people, because of their pride, because they think they're smarter than everyone else, True. can't accept it many times. You know, we have some strong doctrines in the Word of God, like in Genesis, the identity of the fruit. Yes. It's not apple. Right. Okay, if you're shocked, okay, I'm what? sorry, but it's not apple, okay? Sons of God, right. who are they, Come on. right? Who are these sons of God? You're like, you know, all those things that you see in mythology, it's not mythology. Right. It's uh, some of the characters that you see are actual characters that lived on earth. And this is where you're like, oh, man, this is crazy stuff. You know, that's too deep for me. What is too deep for you? Do you think that your deepness compares to knowledge of God? You think that your deepness compares to word of God, how God is, you know, immense, omnipotent, omniscient? You have to make sure that you have attitude of humility when you're learning the truth. Yes. And first, you know, first blessing of a Bible believer is that you have the truth. Amen. When you have the truth. Thank you. You know, I don't know if you guys have purchased this book yet. You know, it's Amazing Dispensationalism from Genesis to Revelation by Dr. Jin Kim. You know, he's the pastor of San Jose Bible Baptist Church. And I highly recommend, you know, it doesn't cost too much. Go to Amazon, you know, type in Dr. Jin Kim, you know, dispensationalism. It'll come out. It will help you and you get your understanding a lot better. So instead of twisting what he says, I'm just going to read some stuff from it. So there are some teachings that you have to avoid as a Bible believer. If you do have the truth, and we have so many materials in our website, and you get to study, and you get to understand, and you get to be blessed by it. But these are some stuff that you have to avoid. That's why unless you are grounded in the foundation you know, of Bible-believing doctrines, you shouldn't go out there and trying to learn other stuff yet. Right. You shouldn't be polluted by other things, right? I don't have to name people. There are a bunch of people out there. Yes. And you just go, okay, against Dr. Ruckman, against Dr. Jin Kim, you type it, and then all those things, you just block it. <laughs> you know? they're, they're wrong. So... And some of these things I want you to understand. So this is like teaching, preaching, sermon, because a lot of times you hear things, right? And they're like, oh, what are people talking about? And as a Bible believer, you need to know. Amen. You shouldn't be quizzical. You shouldn't be like someone, you know, with a question mark on your head every time you hear certain denomination, groups of people, or doctrines. You have to know and yes. grow. I mean, if you love the truth, you're going to learn the truth. Yes. Amen. Let's see, who are some of the folks, churches out there that we need to avoid? Come on. We must avoid the meat acts hyper dispensationalist grace church. Why? They ignore the spiritual Christian doctrines found in the Old Testament, which can give us spiritual blessings. Right. Avoid people who ignore Old Testament. Right. Right. You know, there are people out there they don't go to Old Testament at all. I mean, they're stuck in the New Testament, and they refuse to apply anything from the Old Testament. I think, <laughs> I mean, just being you know, practical, using common sense, God gave us all 66 books for us to read and study Thank you. and get blessed by it. Yes. And if you ever hear folks thinking, talking about 
hyper dispensationalism, just know that you know, they don't want to apply any of the spiritual doctrines in the Old Testament. Must avoid. And avoid those heretics who teach water baptism for salvation. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we had a great blessing. Yes. You know, our saints getting baptized. But you do it as a testimony, Amen. right? But there are those who teach that water baptism is necessity for salvation. Who are they? You guessed it. You know, Roman Catholics, Fresh. the Church of Christ, right. the Mormons, and some Pentecostals. Right. All trash. And Presbyterians, right? Yes. You know, there's so many. They're all compromising and they're so mixed up. And they don't even know what they're actually believing in. So they're like, okay, even though I'm a Calvinist, you know, even though I'm a Methodist, I think I'm going to try what the Catholics did. I'm going to try, you know, what that people did, you know. And of course, part of the reason they do that is because they always want to increase numbers. Right. Yeah, right? Okay. How did that church become so big? Ah, they teach certain doctrines. So I'm going to copy it. And then, of course, you're going to bring those crowds. So, I mean, not to our members or people who's listening, right? You know, God forbid. Yes. But if you really need a business plan, go to those mega churches. Yeah. See how they do it. And, man, you, you become rich. Yeah. yeah. But worst thing about that compared to any other business out there, they're selling God's word. They're using God's word to increase their wealth, Wicked. their fame. I mean, if they are saved, they have a lot of things to answer at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. So avoid those who teach water baptism for salvation. Right. I mean, I was, <clears throat> back in the day when I was going to college, I was looking for some, I don't know, I, I, was, I found out the truth, or maybe before, you know, I found out the King James Bible. But I always wanted to do something. So there was a club, you know, they had some flyer out in the, you know, campus. Oh yeah, you know, we're gonna have Bible study. So I went to the Bible study. I don't, <laughs> I'm not sure if I was saved at that time. But you know, I was going to secular church. And then they did the Bible study, you know, get to know each other. And then they said, okay, let's go out, guys. So, okay, uh, you thought you were gonna go out there, you know, pass our tracks or something. You know, they said, oh, we're gonna go to this neighborhood and we're gonna go door to door. Oh, well, you guys heard of visitation, right? Yes. Go to door to door. But the leader was saying that, okay, tell them where you're from and then make sure you get some donation. So the whole time, you know, I was with somebody, I don't know, I, I forget their faces. Wow. We're knocking on the doors, it's somewhere in Santa Monica, and saying, you know, we're from so-and-so, it was Church of Christ. You know, can you donate? <laughs> we knocked on like, I don't know, hundreds of doors. They maybe got like 50 bucks or, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> and that's, that's what they do. That's their ministry. They're going door to door, asking for donation, and on top of that, they're sending people to hell. Right. Man, I hope that 50 bucks were never spent on anything, you know? And they use these false doctrines to entice people. Yes. Think about that. You've heard so many people, if you were to go to Catholic church, were you baptized as a little baby? You know? What does baby know? Nothing. By the way, right? I mean, does baby have understanding of, you know, good and evil? No. No. I mean, it's just for all the shows, right? Right. And it's to, you know, hold them like a prisoners. Yes. As a prisoners of church. So again, avoid those heretics who teach water baptism for salvation. Amen. 
And there are Baptists out there, too, yeah. teach this heresy. There are a lot of Baptists who are hyper-dispensationalists who ignore spiritual Christian doctrines found in the Old Testament. So just because we're called Baptists, just because someone else is called Baptists, doesn't mean that they're real Bible believers. Right. Just because someone says we're independent, you know, King James only, you know, blah, blah, blah. If they don't believe everything that the Bible says, and they don't stand for these doctrines, like deep doctrines, how can you say you're a real Bible believer? Right. Right? You're a compromiser. Yes. And many times, it goes back to seminaries. Yeah. I, I truly, sincerely feel for those people who seek the truth, but somehow, they were led to a wrong places, right? right? And they're brainwashed, and they're polluted by those false pastors, teachers. That's why those people who decide to go to Bible colleges, they come out as uh, doubters of King James Bible many times. Right. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. So avoid people who teach water baptism for salvation. And if you thought baptism was a part of salvation, then you have to really get saved That's right. today. Yes. You only get saved by trusting Jesus Christ and Him alone Amen. right now. Not by works right. and not by, you know, any water baptism. Some say the plan of salvation has been the same from beginning to end. Can you believe it? Wrong. All right. So they're saying that you know, back when Abraham was alive, Jacob, Isaac, Right? And then all the way to, you know, Revelation, anywhere, they think salvation plan is the same. When we think about it, that's ridiculous, right? Yes. I mean, Old Testament, how, I mean, there are different stages, but like under the Mosaic law, people, their sins were forgiven, you know, through animal sacrifice. Yes. Blood atonement, right? They have to sacrifice and, you know, and you think that we have, to, we have the same salvation in the New Testament. And that is called covenant theology or covenant of grace. And this is primarily held by Calvinists right. and Presbyterians. And also, if you ever heard of this name, James White. Yeah. And even some independent fundamental Baptist churches. And, you know, this might shock you. Shelton Smith, Sword of the Lord. Jack Hiles and his churches. West Coast Baptist Church under Paul Chapel, among others. They teach this heresy. When Bible says rightly dividing the word of truth, God has a plan and God is salvation, different type for different period. Yes. Yes. If you say everything's same from beginning to end, you're making God a liar. Amen. Right. Would you want to be at a place where it makes God a liar? No. Just like when Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall, pass, my word shall not pass away. But if your Bible has missing verses that Jesus Christ said, I mean, why would you use it? Why would you be at a church where it uses devil's Bible? So you have to be a discerning Christian, understanding Christian. Yes, sir. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. Next one. This one... <coughs> You might have heard of these people. Tex Mars, Ken Hoven, you know. They're, they're like some well-known folks out there. They teach Christians are to be raptured after the tribulation. 
They're post-tribulation people. This is an end times Jewish doctrine. Right. So they're getting mixed up. Yes. You know, there's the church. There's the Israel, right? And there's the Gentiles. Right. Yes. They're getting mixed up. I mean, I still, I just don't understand people in their right mind who wants to go through tribulation. <laughs> I mean, you, you read from the word of God, you know, have you seen what's going to happen in the book of Revelation? Right. And these that teach that rapture is after the tribulation, they're heretics. Right. They're sending people to hell if they trust salvation by works because of this doctrine. Right. This is an end time Jewish doctrine. So if you ever hear, you know, Paul's tribulation and then they agree with it and they follow it, avoid. Amen. You know, avoid. With all this you avoid first, okay? Amen. And then once you start gaining and growing in the knowledge of God, you can start talking to them. All right? When you're at a, such a young, immature Christian stage, it's hard for you to argue or rebuttal. True. You might actually be swayed by yes. it. Because why do you think that so many of so-called intellectuals, people you thought were smart, believe in such a heresy? Yeah. I mean, first of all, you go to the heart, right? But secondly, because they get brainwashed very well. And then these leaders that are used by the devil, they're really good with their talks, yes. their speech, right? I mean, it's like, wow, you know. But a lot of times, because it's the devil who gives him that talent to do it, yes. right? Uh, I mean, a lot of times when you hear Bible-believing preachers and teachers, you know, you don't say, you know, they're the most eloquent speakers, right? You know. But a lot of times because it pricks your heart. You know, whenever someone pricks your heart and then you get convicted because of the word of God in preaching, Amen. you think that's not such an eloquent speech, right? But when someone, you know, gives you words that you love to hear, when they say you are the best, everything that's happening is not your fault, Right? God is love and love and love, and you'll become a millionaire one day, wow. right? Tickle. Then people are going to, you know, like it. They're going to be like, okay, I want to listen to that guy. Church, you know, service should not be your therapy session. Right. You shouldn't come to church to feel good, right. right? But that's how all the churches are being turned into yes. because of this ecumenical movement. I mean, they just use Christ's name in vain. They're like, okay, come. How are you today? Not doing good. It's okay. You know, God loves you. Instead of saying, okay, you know, I mean, if you're a preacher or something, okay, you know, something going on, you, right. know, you have to get right with the Lord. Yes. <laughs> I mean, isn't that it, isn't it such a different approach, right? When you're trying to talk to your family or talk to somebody else, you know, because I know you guys do, and when you're trying to witness to someone, you're not going to be like, hey, God is love, right? And you don't talk about judgment. You don't talk about hell. You're like, God is love. You know, accept Christ. Repeat after me. And you're saved. Yes. See, it doesn't work like that. Right. You have to realize that you are a sinner on your way to hell. Amen. Yes. And without knowing about it, and then you have to believe that Jesus is God. Yes. And without all of that, you know, you could repeat after someone's prayer a hundred times. That's right, right. Yeah. And there are also those who say, oh, don't use sinner's prayer. Oh, you, know? Okay. you know? They're cuckoos too. Right. Right. So there are so many, so many of these wrong doctrines and teachings out there that you have to avoid. And you heard of lordship salvation. Right. You hear it all the time, right? And as a, someone who's attending our church and you know, who's listening, you should know what it is, at least you know, at a high level, right? I mean, if I were to ask you know, 
sister here or brother here. It was the Lordship salvation. You know, they shouldn't be, you know, looking at me like a deer in a headlight, right? At least they should kind of understand. So Lordship salvation teaches that having faith in Christ is not enough for salvation. But that faith in Christ must be followed up with a significant change of carnal behavior. It's the same as works by salvation. Right. You and I can never be perfect. We can. True. That's why Christ died for you and me. Yes. Because he knew that our works cannot save us. But if someone were to teach you, trust Christ and follow, and you have to have change, then how are they ever going to have assurance of salvation? Because there are so many carnal Christians that are saved. Just because someone's doing drugs doesn't mean that they're not saved if they have trusted Christ in the past. Right? right? Yeah. Just because someone's in jail doesn't mean that they're not saved. Right? And even to the point, just because someone kills someone does not mean that they're not saved. Just because someone committed a suicide does not mean that they're not saved. There's only one condition in this day and age. Church age is that if you trust the Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're saved no matter what. But if anyone else teaches otherwise, you know, they're heretics. I mean, they call us heretics for telling the truth, teaching the truth. Think about it. So who are these folks? You probably heard their names, right? It, it might ring. John MacArthur, Paul Washer, Ray Comfort. Again, another one, James White. I mean, he's everywhere. Teach this heresy. Man, if someone were to you know, forge you, hey, watch this YouTube video. And then if you see MacArthur, Washer, Comfort, White, you say block, right? right? Especially if you're not grounded in the word of God yet, in a strong, deep doctrine, you know, it will pollute you and it will taint you because they are going to use Bible verses, yes. but they use it out of context. Right. It's like this, you know, in book of Acts 8, and where... New translations, got to read of this verse, 37. So 36 says, you know, you believe Jesus Christ. And then eunuch confesses that. And, and he gets baptized. You get rid of that confession of faith, go straight to baptism. People think that, hey, you got to get baptized to get saved. Simple as that. And people listening to it, it makes sense. They're not dumb people. They have hundreds of thousands of followers because people believe what they say. That's why you have to be careful, and you have to be making sure that what I'm having is the real truth. And also, you know, in lieu of that, of course, many teach works for salvation. I mean, literally, you have to work to go to heaven or paradise, anywhere. I think those are the most miserable people. When you say you have to work for salvation, where is the standard? I always ask, what must I do if I do have to work to get my salvation or receive my salvation? Do I have to give you know, a certain amount of money to the poor? Do I have to, you know, be nice to maybe 1,000 people? Yeah. I mean, or do I have to give out a track to 100,000 people? Never Where is the standard? Many also teach works for salvation. And obviously, these, uh, these teachers of heresies include every single religion, you know, except real Bible-believing churches. Catholics, Masons, Buddhists, Hindus, Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Scientologists, and the Church of Christ, and more. Yeah. I mean, if you're like, okay, I'm going to visit those churches, you know, because I want to learn. I mean, it's like you're going to a, how should I say, you know, party party? You guys know party party? Yeah? Just go in there, and then you want to 
jump inside that toilet. That's what you're doing. Uh, you only got to get dirtier. Yes. So, I mean, it's good that, you know, some people may say, hey, you know, visit us, visit us, visit us. But you could be nice, right? You could be nice about it. If you know it's going to pollute you and make you dirty, you just avoid. Yes. Yeah, avoid all appearance of evil. Yes. Right? Amen. That's all you got to do, right? <laughs> you don't have to be jerk about it, you know. So be nice about it. So some people also teach that you can lose salvation from committing a sin after salvation. Right. You hear that all the time. Yeah. That's why people don't have assurance of salvation. And this heresy is because Christians are saved by faith even when still sinning. And they retrieve these verses from some other time period. So if they say that after you get saved, you could still lose your salvation, avoid them. Yes. They're right. taking it out of context in the Word of God. Yes. So they're taking it out from other dispensational period or other Jewish matters. And now we get to the, another very strong and influential part. There are heretics who teach signs, right? Signs and speaking in tongues, right? They're not for you. I mean, signs are for Jewish folks, right? right? They, are, they include Charismatics, Pentecostals, Catholics, Benny Hinn, Joel Austin, all of the famous TBN preachers, Bishop T.D. Jakes and John Hagee. Teaching signs is a heresy yes. under, as a Christian, because why? Physical signs are for the physical Jews, Amen. right? I mean, honestly, you know, me and my brother, we used this in the past. <laughs> you know, some people, we, we meet like some Jewish folks and try to witness to them. You know, I'm a Jewish. They say, oh, you're a spiritual Jew, right? And I'm a physical Jew as well, <laughs> right? If you got the joke, you're good. Because my last name is Jew. So I say, you know what, you know, physical Jew. But it sounds ridiculous, right? I mean, those, that's why if you don't rightly divide the word of God, you're just going to get messed up. Yes. And if someone were to come to you and say, you know what, I just got a blessing. All nighter, I spoke in tongues, right? I saw signs. I saw visions of Jesus Christ. Devil. Right? It's a sign. It's not for you. Right. right? And if you hear those teachings, then you know it's a heresy. Yes. You have to avoid it. Not, and don't just avoid it. You have to learn why it's wrong. Right. And you have to be able to tell those folks who's deceived from the word of God why it's wrong. That's why it's very important that you're at every service when the church door opens. Amen. Because you are going to gain that knowledge and you're going to grow. Yes. You know, we don't tell you to come to church to fill up the numbers. That's, uh, I mean, as a real Bible believer, that's the furthest away from right. what we want. Yes. You come to church for truth. Amen. That's it. Amen. And if you, get, if you can get that truth from other local churches, go ahead. Go, attend and grow. It's just that there are very few and far in between. Yes. That's why sometimes it's better for you to just listen to online preaching than actually go to those and get you know, polluted and get your spirit feel burdened. If you're at a place when they keep on teaching you and tossing you dirty stuff, I mean, you don't feel good, right? I mean, if you're around full of sick people, how would you feel? I mean, everybody's, you know, I mean, I'm coughing a little bit, but if everybody's coughing right in front of you, behind you, back of you, you're going to feel uncomfortable. Yes. And if there are places there, and if there are, you know, channels out there, and teachings out there, teaching these heresies, just avoid. Amen. You don't need to get sick through these false teachings. Amen. There's going to be other. People who teach you 
you have to receive baptism of the Holy Ghost by physical actions, such as a laying on of hands and water baptism are also heretics. I, mean, I don't know if you've seen some of the videos from those meetings. Man. <clears throat> if they're the faith healer, you know, this is a weapon. <laughs> they line up people, right. and then they just smack them as hard as they can. I mean, as hard as they can. Kick them, too. Uh, yeah, kick them. Or maybe, you know, they do some combination of punches, you know. Yeah. Demon. And I've seen some videos where some people are just up there because they're forced to be up there. So when it's their turn, as the hand action happens, they just drop. And then they just roll their eyes and just lie down. And they sometimes pick, you know, do a pick open a little bit of ice. <laughs> These physical deeds were meant for a different time period and different group of people. Christians are based on dealing with spiritual things, you know, spiritual things. Amen. And there's a lot more, you know, there's a thing called replacement theology. You might hear something about replacement theology, which claims the church replaces Israel. There are heretics as well. I mean, they're completely denying what the Bible says. I mean, Israel is very important to God, right? And while physical Israel will be dealt with again since God promised Abraham, he will never forsake physical Israel. God will not forsake physical Israel. So don't think that, you know, hey, you know, church replaces Israel completely. Calvinists, Tex Mars, and many other cults believe this. And probably I'll continue with more. We have this blessing where we could worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Truth, again, is standing for the right doctrine, perfect word of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. And it's the difference between you and others who reject the right doctrine. If you believe and if you hold on to this deep right doctrine, you're a real Bible believer. You're blessed. But because of your feelings, because of your own pride, because of your own tiny puny you know, brain, you reject it because you don't like the preacher or because you don't like how it's told to you, right. then you're no better than calls out there. Amen. Right? And if you truly want to grow and understand real Bible believers' blessing, you can't be stuck at truth only. Secondly, it's in spirit. And this spirit is spirit of charity. Do you know why many <coughs> so-called Bible believers seem so mean, they seem so rigid, they seem like, you know, that block over there, right? Yes. Because your heart is not right. You want to grow your truth. You want to grow all your deep doctrine. However, there's no balance with your spirit. You have to focus on the people. You cannot just focus on your knowledge and the church. Amen. You have to understand. You have to be a blessing to other folks. Yes. I mean, that's obviously you preach the gospel. You know, you be an encouragement to them. You counsel them. You know, you study the word of God together. But you have to look at the person. If you have truth only, a lot of times what happens is that you become that egotistic pride you know, full of the devil, you know, this church splitter, and you leave the church. You're that murmur, complainer, always complaining. Right. Right. But you need to have that spirit of love, charity. You got to show love in action. You will have unhealthy balance if you don't focus on people. So you have to focus on truth as well as you have to focus on people, right? You have to realize how much of a blessing you can be to others. Yes. 
And in order to be a blessing to others does not mean that you're criticizing, it, right? Amen. You can't be a murmur. You can't be a backbiter. You can't be a babbler. You can't be a gossiper. Amen. You do it out of charity. You yeah. do it out of your love. And that's where a lot of Bible believers have wrong attitude. Someone comes and they're like, what? You, you, you believe in water baptism? What? You're hyper dispensationalist? What? I don't believe this. You know? Instead of dealing with them with the right spirit, dealing with them you know, as you would your own brother or sister, yes. that's why you have to have a balance. If you, if you really want to be a real Bible believer, if you want to have a if you want to experience, you know, quote unquote, and if you want to know the blessings as a real Bible believer, you have to have truth and you have to have that spirit. Once you have the right balance of spirit and truth, then you're going to receive all the blessing, Amen. enjoy the blessing, and you're going to give out those blessings to others. Amen. That's why, what happens if you're all of a spirit of love, right? And you have no sound doctrine. All you're going to say is, it's okay. Sinning, it's okay. Well, you want to learn about deep doctrine? It's okay. You know? You know what street preaching? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Visitation? It's okay. It's okay. You know? It's okay. It's all about love. You know? It's all about love. Then what happens? There's no growth into it. And then you just stay where you are. That's why many Fundamentalists are stuck one in the other. They're all about spirit. They don't care about the truth. Some of them are all about truth, but they have no spirit. But as a real Bible believer, you and I have to have that balance between love for the sound doctrine where you will not compromise and you have spirit, you know, believe in charity and you show love in action. And with that, you will truly be that fundamentalist, right? People who believe the Bible, literally, and you will be a blessing, not to church here only, but to the world out there. Yes. Let's pray.